I, I guess the other thing I'd point out that under rule 5013 sub six, um, and this is once again, trying to avoid motions by way of um, attending at a case conference, um, rule 50.13 sub six allows for procedural orders to be made at a case conference if notice has been given and it is appropriate to do so or on consent of the parties. Well, um, uh, it, uh, the determination of it is whether it's appropriate to do so um, would be made by the court. And um, I'll, I'll give you an example of a, a case on which I've seized myself of all motions. Um, Council sought a case conference uh, to address these three possible motions, one for trial together of a couple of different actions, one for an amendment to a timetable, and one for determining how much additional time the plaintiff might have to conduct further discoveries of the defendant following fairly extensive further productions after the first round of examinations for discovery. Um, and so at the first case conference, while there didn't seem to be too much issue with respect to trial together, so I made the order, there was some disagreement with respect to the timetable, but I essentially mediated an acceptable timetable, which I ordered. And then for the additional time to be required or allowed for further examination for discovery of the defendant's representative, I found out how much the extent of the further productions and said to counsel whose client was going to be subject to the further discovery, look, there's, there's over a hundred new documents which have been, which are now available, which weren't produced for the first examination. So, you know, that, that, that warrants some significant further time for examination. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you another couple of weeks to think about this, but I think you're getting the message that I'm inclined to order some fairly significant, you know, more further discovery because of this. Um, but when you come back, I'm not gonna schedule a motion. I'm just gonna decide the issue. 